All right, so we're, we're looking at summing the forces to get the resultant force. This is the single force we could replace all the others with, and the system would still be under the same, uh, the same impetus from the force and hopefully respond in just the same way it would have under all the individual forces. And then we're doing the same thing with the uh, individual or all the all the moments. I don't know how to write it. I'll just, I'll just put M for the resultant moment being the sum of all the other moments. Now remember, those forces contribute to both of these. So if you change one of the forces or a couple of the forces, you change both of these sums. Because the result, the moments uh, are caused by the resultants. So that's the kind of thing we're working on uh, now. There is uh, uh, something sort of associated to this sum of the moments, and it's, it's the type of thing um, certainly easy to see. You know, if you're imagining a big steering wheel like they have on the sailing vessels, like I have on my luxury cruise liner that we're working on. We'll take the problem up again big wheel there. In fact, those wheels, if you watch the old sailing pirate navy movies and like, they have a really big wheel on there. Now, a lot of the steering is electronic, but they used to have a really big wheel on there so the captain could grab that wheel and turn it. Um, and that's this business of the sum of the moment. So if the captain, say, grabs, we'll just make it simple, grabs it two opposite sides there, like you would when you're driving your car. Remember, it used to, they used to tell you 10 and 2 with your hands. Now they say 9 and 3. Did you know that? You know why? So you're going to take your teeth out with your hands and airbags. Airbags, yeah. Get your hands down a little bit. I have, to, I have to work on that. I've been driving a lot of years with 10 and 2. <laughs> and now, you know, now I'm getting older too. I'm sinking, so, so I can barely see over the. And I got my, I have to get my blinker on, my left blinker on all the time. And, and, and now I only drive, no matter what. I can't go over 30. And then I have to go pay for gas, and I have to pay for gas with the exact change from my, from my little coin purse. I have to count it out there. That's how I live. So, uh, so imagine grabbing this wheel, and let's see why it's a big wheel that they use for these big ships and the like. Grabbing the wheel at two different places and giving it a turn, and we'll say clockwise direction. So one hand is there exerting that force, and the other is going to, well, it's going to do pretty much the opposite. And in general, those are about the same size. And of course, you probably already see that the reason those wheels are real big is to give a real big moment arm. Bless you. Nice big moment arm so that it's very easy for someone who can only exert a certain amount of force to be able to exert an awful lot of torque, and that's what the big steering wheels are, are for. You know, in the, in the Indianapolis racers, they have very small wheels because they don't have to turn much. It's very little uh, change of the wheel that makes them turn. Um, so they don't want a big moment arm there. Uh, this type of thing, well, let's see. Let's see what the resultant moment is of Though. Well, it's pretty easy to uh, calculate. Let's take it about the about the center point there. We can do that really easy in our head. It's actually uh, two F D. One one of the moments is F D. We've got two of them that are the same size. We get two F D. When we have this type of situation where we have two equal and opposite forces separated by a certain distance, and that's what we've got here. Anytime we have this business of uh, two equal and opposite forces separated by some distance, in this case it happens to be 2D, that's what's known as a couple. You thought you and, and Biff 
were a couple. Nuh uh, this is a couple. And you're just going to have to break that in a bit. You don't know who I was looking at. Maybe I was looking at you, maybe I wasn't. Is there a female you, named Biff that one of these guys could be with? No, these, uh, these actually, Biff? Did have Let's see, the there's, Biff. there's really? Susie and Buffy <laughs> and Muffy and Missy and Fiona. Is that right? No, 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 no. that name's taken somewhere. <laughs> no, I'll sue you. <laughs> All right, so this is what's known as a couple. It's, it's, a, it's two moments formed by equal and opposite forces, a distance to be apart. Sometimes given the symbol C, I can't even remember what our book does. And it's calculated as the magnitude of the forces times the minimum distance between them. Well, that's what this perpendicular line is, and that's what this 2D is. Any other distance we took between them is going to be longer. So we want this perpendicular distance between them. Uh, for the example, it was 2D. So it's the magnitude of the forces. Remember, they're equal and opposite. So it's not the magnitude of both forces, because they're the same anyway. Magnitude of the forces times the distance between them. And it's just the same thing we would have got if we'd done it individually. It's just a, a, a particular situation where we have equal and opposite forces separated by some distance, that it happens to be a couple. Uh, it's a special case of the sum of the moments. Generically, or uh, what was that noise? That was a noise. I heard a noise. I didn't hear. It wasn't me. I know it wasn't you. I think it was your phone. No, it wasn't I my didn't phone. think that was, that's not the type the of noise you made. It was on my phone, specifically for this class. Oh, that was my phone. Dana, <laughs> Dana is pretty uh -oh. sure it was uh -oh. you. Was it? Yeah, we have it do, do you want me to answer it? Let's see what it was. <laughs> if it's something, you can answer it, I'll let you answer it. <laughs> is it from your mom? No, it's from uh, it's spam. Oh. <laughs> you can answer that. Yeah, if I answer that, then they'll know that's a live email address and they'll send you a whole bunch more stuff. Oh, uh, they'll send me a whole bunch of stuff. No. Okay, All right. never mind. All right, uh, this sum of the moments, uh, this is just, the, a couple is just a special case of that, where the moment, the two forces happen to be equal and opposite. But the sum of the moments works for any forces, any direction we've got in the problem. Uh, just a special case happens to be if we've got that situation, then we've got the, some of the, uh, we've got a couple. So we were working on this problem here with the luxury cruise liner. And I wanted you to find the resultant force and the resultant moment due to those tugs. So you need to figure out the force vectors exerted by each of those tugs. Sum that up, get the forces might make sense to do it in the x-y direction, especially since I implied there's an x and a y direction already for you. And then you need to calculate the moment each one of them uh, exerts. Because each one of those is going to cause the ship to turn a little bit. That's what tugs do. They shove them places and they turn them places. So I want you to figure out what those are. So figure out what the forces are, if you haven't already. As soon as you do, if I were you, I would check with someone else just to see if you got the same thing. If you don't want to go to calculate in the moments, if you got the forces wrong, it's just not going to work out for you. There's nothing I can do to fix it. And then we'll get to that last part about what we can do to get a super tub to replace it. We want one the right size and we want to put it in the right place to get the same motion the ship four tugs do. The uh, tugboat captain's union isn't happy that we get just one ship, but my investors are happy. And I can save some money with a super ship plus. We're, we're Americans. 
easier for better. Simple as that. We want a couple Honda Civics. We can get one Humvee. Take care of everything. Or quite possibly the world's most practical car, the Humvee pickup truck. You haven't seen one of those? It's it's a regular Humvee. It's like a crew cab Humvee, which is even stupider. You know, Humvees, uh, pretty, pretty good drawing of one is is that, and it's got it's got. Uh, Two, two doors and then some space in the back like a station wagon. The Humvee pickup truck is that. It's what? Oh yeah. Which is why it gets eight miles a gallon with the tailwind downhill. got to get into uh, XY or IJ notation. It's only a two-dimensional problem. So for the, the moments we're calculating for the X and the Y direction. I guess nope. I'm confused. In a 2D problem, like we're working here, purely a 2D problem, there isn't going to be any moment in the X and the Y direction. All the moment will be in the K direction. These tugs are on, you can turn it clockwise or counterclockwise, nothing else. So that's a K direction moment only. But yeah, you're going to have to figure that out. And one way to do it is to figure out the position vector, the R vector, for each one of the tugs, and then do R cross F for each one of the forces. That's one way to do it. Or you can break each force into its X, Y components calculating each of the individual moments of those components, which is exactly what the cross product does anyway. It's just a, a little bit different path through the geometry. If, if it would help, you're welcome to hum quietly a, a C Saint Shanty song. If you want to uh, talk like Popeye or a pirate or something, that would help you. Whatever, for whatever reason, we had to have that at that point. 
first force. Something like that, and it's 90 back, oh, not quite the scale, obviously. but in the minus y direction, so we'll just do minus sine 60. Check. And so we do uh, the magnitude's 5,000, so we get what, 2,500. I'm sorry. Okay, and you just have to do that for the other two or other three as well. Direction and units, it's all there. Okay. Completely describes that one force. So, a couple more minutes to the other two, we'll double check. And then we'll calculate the moment exerted by that first force. So, get all those forces, and we'll do the moment exerted by that first force.
got all the forces? Start working on the moments. You want to wait for me for the first one? Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's let's see. If we're getting the forces. So if you want, if you're all done, then what's F two? F two is three thousand nine pounds. I what? Three. Three thousand nine pounds. Or I. Three thousand nine. Three thousand nine. Three zero no. zero nine. I guess I rounded off a little bit more. Three significant figures, give or take. Uh, and then what? Um, uh, plus three, or er, 3,993. Plus? No, I don't know. Maybe you don't know. Look at oh, the picture. Minus. No, I had opposite signs. I had the last one. Wait, that was 4,000 minus 4,000. You said something else. You run it really. I run it. You can't judge me from that. Okay, <laughs> three. You, Trevor Source Rex, you got three? Yeah, yeah. That? Minus 5,000 pounds for that. F4. BJ, you got F4? 2,536 pounds. I have plus 2,536 pounds. J have. Plus, they're both in the plus direction and arbitrarily chosen. And since that's a 45 degree angle. Right. Anything greatly different than that? Maybe you round it off a little bit. That's it in the ball. For which one? Four. Four. No, that's the plus x direction. It's pushing oh. in the plus x direction. So. All right, so let's figure out the moment of that first force. To do that, All, this, all these moments are about O, so I don't necessarily need to do that. So I'll just say the moment uh, by the first force, I'll call M1, and we know it's about 0.0. I have to keep that, keep that in mind. And you can, you can say something about that if you need to. All right, so that's going to be the position of the first force crossed with the first force. We've got F1. What's R1? How would you sketch it? It relates the position of that first force to the position, the point of interest, in this case the O point O. What is R1? To draw it? It's the position of that first force relative to point O. Where on that first force, though? So the tail or the head? The back of the boat or the front of the boat? Or where the captain sits? R goes from the point of interest to the force. But where on the force? To the front of the boat where it's touching? To the back of the boat where it makes all that foamy motor noise thing it does. To where in the middle where the captain is. And I don't even have the boat here. Because the boat is a geometric length. But this is a force vector. So its length is whatever I drew it. So where do I put it? Not quite. It will be more specific about wherever I want. Force line thingy. And that's the technical. The, the anywhere, anywhere on the line of action of the force. Now, be careful with your drawings. This looks like it goes darn close to through the point of interest. In that case, what would be the moment? Be zero. But that's just 
the drawing here, so be real careful with that. Don't, don't make a drawing and then think you see answers that aren't quite there. So from the point O to the force line of action, the best place to do that is where the boat touches. Why? Because why? It, yeah, it's, it's just right, it's right there in the picture. You already know that. So we know that the vector R1, which is the second row in our matrix, is going to be uh, minus 90i, because we have to go back from point O, and we're up 50 in the y direction, plus 50. Nothing in the k direction, and that's feet. So we put that. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's actually something you can do with a matrix like this. You can pull out a common factor, just as long as you don't forget that it still multiplies, but it multiplies all over. Each of these is feet, so I just pulled it out and used it once. It's not just a symbolism, it's something you can actually do with vectors coming with uh, matrices. And then the first force, 2500i minus 40, don't forget the minus sign. Um, so you got to make these matrices big enough to get everything in there so you're not crowding it. It's very easy that way to lose a minus sign. And so there's the matrix for calculating the moment exerted by the first force. Don't lose the minus sign. 
Don't be sloppy on these. It's really easy to make a goof, especially with the minus signs. So you can have some of the components in here can have three minus signs in them. Every single minus sign counts. So, you got some agreement. Chris, you didn't agree with them. Well, you didn't agree with me, Jay. Oh, well, then of course. Two or three. Dana, Dana, who's going to try to get through the entire semester without saying a single word to anybody. Possible. But if he does, we'll have it on tape. Of course, we could fake that because the tape won't know who's saying something. We can say something, say something really rude, and then we'll all go, Dana. What? No agreement there? I think it's a different problem. No. Yeah, I can't do it. Why it didn't make sense. Now, you, you at least should know the general direction it will act. So if you're getting clockwise when you should counterclockwise, you can uh, suspect something went wrong. You can always, we can get a little bit about the magnitude. You know which ones are acting farther away and they're all the same size. That helps a bit.
Right? That looks okay? Yep, everything looks okay. Minus 59. Yeah, 50, 10, 2,500. Got a minus. Yep, everything's all right. And so when you work out that math there, because that's all the K component, comes out to be 265,000. And that's, that's the more universally accepted way to separate thousands. Just put a bit of a space in there. And that's in the K direction. And it uh, looks like it should be positive because this will tend to turn the ship counterclockwise, which is our positive direction. Got that now? So you got? Okay. And so you do that for all the other ones too. <laughs> uh, and we'll see what we get for the other ones. Check your R vectors if you need to, because if you're doing the cross product with the wrong R vector, you're going to get the wrong moment. Anybody got the uh, cross product calculator on their calculator? Cross product program? Product calculator in Google, all kinds of people, all things come up, and you just enter in the components. Uh, and use that to check what you did. Make sure you know how to do it because you can't bring the Google search engine in here for tests. Even though some of you insist on leaving your phones on. You got the right R vector. Don't go through the cross product if you got the wrong one. Check with everybody. But it's just from the the uh, geometry right here in the picture. It's all right there. All those distance. Don't forget that two and one are, have different y values. Boat two is a little bit farther along the curve of the ship. So we'll look at the drawing carefully.
positive direction, actually the, the, uh, the k direction is actually the cross product of i and j. Put the unit vectors in there, did the cross product with ones where the magnitudes are ones and zeros where it isn't, which is pretty easy. You get x crossed into y is k out of the board. So that puts my fingers in that kind of curl. Okay. Or first vector, second vector, out of the board. So then that my fingers, my fingers have to curl in that direction. Just a way for us to get a uh, directional quantity that's uh, out of or out of the board as a vector point. All right, we're ready to check some of the other moments. We have some of them. Are you guys agreeing as you go? Yeah. All right, let's see what we have for M2. They're only in the K, they're all in the K direction. They're all foot pounds. What do we have for M2? Who volunteers it? Negative, yeah. Two would tend to spin it clockwise, which is our negative direction. Negative what? Two hundred twenty-eight thousand. I got negative uh, six four nine eight sixty. So it's six hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, in the ballpark, depending on what your round off is, minus I have sixty-one thousand. I mean, sorry, 610,000. You're about there, didn't you say? Yeah, about 40,000. Well, if you didn't use just these numbers, you're going to have something a little bit different. But it's in that ballpark. You know, you're not out there with the tug going, uh-oh, my, my, the moment I'm exerting is off by 3%. But... We want to know. Some, we want to know about what the what these numbers are. So, Chris. Okay. Check your R if you need to. Pounds, foots, or foots, pounds are the same thing. All right. The uh, the third one. most certainly would tend to spin the shift clockwise. Two million. So put in them two spaces. These are vectors. They have magnitude, direction, and units. I got it all there. Minus two million. Notice that it's, it's real easy when you write things this way to see what the numbers are and what's most likely to make a mistake. Uh, you don't run the error or trouble of making a comma that the Europeans don't understand or a comma that looks like a one later. And the last one, anybody have four yet? You're still getting there. Positive one million three hundred and forty three thousand. Ish. Ish. Yeah. Ish. Plus I have uh, three ten. One million three ten. But that's a that's fully within the magnitude of one-ish. Dana, you get about those? Ah! Did you hear that? He spoke. You guys weren't paying any attention. You were yakking away and you missed it. So I heard it. I heard it. Huh? That doesn't count. No, I got it. <laughs> he spoke. That's all that matters. Now, but he's thinking, oh good, now Manning will leave me alone for the rest of the term. Should have spoken on the first day. So I didn't have to take the wall, so I didn't have to say here the first day. What can I do with other students? I don't know. For M2, 
and 2, you need these components. One's negative. This one's positive. This one's negative. And for 2, the R vector, which is most easily done out right to where it contacts, because that's the geometry we have to have, is both of those are positive. So there's three positive components in that vector, in that matrix, and one negative. So isn't the J going to be, is it going to be minus and negative, so it's going to be positive? Oh, never If it's... Yes, that would be negative. Glad to help.
you get in the same way. They're all in the k direction. They just add up straight across. Don't forget the minus signs because some of these boats are turning it one way, some are turning it the other. It's not that they're competing with each other. It's that they need to do that to get it to do whatever it's supposed to do to get right into wherever it's supposed to go. And so if you total all those up, you get a million, 35,000, give or take. I mean, minus. Yep. Minus a million. 35,000 uh, foot pounds, pounds, foots. So which, with these four ships, which way is the big ship going to turn? With these four tugs, which way is the ship going to turn? Can you tell? No, you, you, don't, you don't need to look. I'm just, we, I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> negative, that means the thumb goes into the board. That's our negative direction. When we've done that, our fingers curl in one direction only, and that's the way the ship's going to turn. It's going to tend to turn clockwise. BJ. On the moment of four, I got, I got something very different. Did other people get something very different than that? I got it in the opposite direction. You're negative up. Four. Well, You're four positive. can only spin this thing counterclockwise. It's got to be positive. Okay, I can see that. But well, if you have a negative there, then something else is wrong. Well, I'm trying to figure out what else can put my other negative. Okay, the force is positive in both directions. And we had that, positive in both directions. The position vector is positive in the x direction but negative in the k and it's positive by what is that 310 yeah. in the x negative by that's that's going to be 70 in the y and so something then must be going wrong with your cross product oh for, for mr I you got that um after you get these the i and j forces are you using the matrix with the um you got any like for, for this? Yeah. Oh, I'm not doing any matrix for this. This is just simple addition of the moments. Oh, okay. Just simply adding the moments up. That's the easiest way to do it. Could you do that? You can't make it into one well, matrix? Well, that's what this last part of the question was. Where would I put the super tug? Because I know how big to get it. I have to get it enough to push with this force in that direction. Well, that's just a matter of turning the ship, but it's got to have that magnitude. But where do I put it? And I said, let's see, you want to put the super tub somewhere along one of the 70 foot sides. So, so somewhere along here, as opposed to somewhere on the nose, on, I mean the bow or the stern. <laughs> somewhere along the 70 foot side. But where? To figure that out, well, we've got this moment. We want to place that moment, the super tub, Maybe I'll call it RS. I don't know what that is. That's what I'm asking you to find. Where do I put the boat? Where do I put the super tub? Cross with the resultant, which I do have. Now RS is the position of the super tub. I know I want it along the, super, the 70 foot side somewhere, so I know that Y component is 70. I just don't know what the x component is. x, so, it, so some variable x, I want to put it somewhere x, uh, plus uh, 70j feet. Set up this matrix. There's going to be an unknown term in that matrix when you do the cross product for that matrix, work it all out, you'll have that unknown term, and when you solve for that unknown, and you know it needs to equal this, you can solve for the unknown, it'll tell you where to put the ship, the super tug in the x direction. Because when you do this, put that into there, 
and do this, you have one equation, one unknown. And you solve for x. So do that. That's that's what I give you to spoil your weekend.